giving you a voice and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to FTC Top 25. Tonight, we have generated a list of what you guys think are the top 25 teams in FTC Skystone so far. And we will be discussing these teams tonight, as well as showing matches of all of our uh, winners. There are 12 new teams in this month's Top 25, and there's even a rookie team that made it. Uh, reporting for First Updates Now FTC, I'm Nathan. I'm Abbas. And I'm Ashray. Before we get started, let's check out what happened in Massachusetts and Indiana in the past month. We apologize for missing these two states in the uh, Detroit Championship recap. Uh, Massachusetts had a couple of tournaments since our past recap. Uh, the Red Hawk Rumble saw the number one alliance of 14.875 late speed, 75.71 uh, Alamirs, and 28.75 Mighty Bots easily sweep uh, in the finals, winning finals 180 to 26. Uh, the Inspire Award winner at Red Hawk was uh, 14.875 Lightspeed, who had a very successful weekend. The Wild West qualifier was quite competitive and saw the finals matches get over 100 points. Uh, 14.049 Irrational and 12.589 Pioneer Robotics took home the gold, winning the tournament in 12.589 Pioneer Robotics won the Inspire Award as well. Over in Indiana, the Southern League Championship wasn't the most competitive event, but 8417 Metric Legends took home the Inspire Award, punching their ticket to their second state championship of the year. The Inspire Award winner at the North League Championship was 1400 Space Cadets, and the winning alliance was comprised of 12092 Bravo Bots, 12014 Firewires, and 4601 Beta Bots. Congratulations to all of these teams. All right, let's get started. So in the 25th spot tonight, we have Team 9829. That's MakeBots from San Antonio, Texas. Last year, MacBots was the finalist alliance captain of the Houston World Championship, and it looks like they're gunning to be one of the top teams again. As we can see from the video, they were able to quickly get a 7 stack and feature a pass-through design with a rotating scoring mechanism, something we've seen to be extremely, extremely successful with teams this year. So next up in the 24th spot, we have Team 7161. And that's none other, none other than ViperBots Hydra from Austin, Texas. Viperbots Hydra is back with a really strong robot with a very smooth drive, drivetrain and lift. Uh, they were consistently stacking six plus stones and capping every match. They did have some troubles in finals matches, but overall they seem to have, be a very strong contender for this year's game. In the 23rd spot, we have Team 8176. That's, the, that's Steelhead from Hood River, Oregon. Uh, 8176 has a unique robot design. Instead of stacking on top of each stone, they lift up the stack that they've created and place the next stone at the bottom. Uh, so I kind of want to stop as we get that video up and talk about oh, what do yeah. you guys think of this kind of design? Do you think it's effective? Do you think it's kind of cool? Like, uh, I think it's kind of cool, but one thing that I'm worried about is do they get launching penalties for placing the stones? Because it looks to me like, personally, like I don't think it's launching, but based on what first it has defined, it looks to me like the stones have horizontal velocity every time they leave their robot. But, like, What do you guys think about that? Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. I guess they do, but it's mm -hmm. it almost looks like wheels that are popping them out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. really... Another so, thing is that a lot of rules this year are really iffy, like launching we see right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they've been called on it yet, um, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of teams that are doing launching, launching as they're um, delivering. And I think that's really interesting because some rules like launching, like controlling two stones during autonomous, there's a lot of like fine lines uh, that have been described in the forum. So... That's kind of iffy. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really viable strategy. And, like, if they make, like, the world championship and all of this, uh, they'll have two months to, like, practice. And I'm sure they'll get to the point where they have a really consistent system that all it does is just place the stone super straight and just goes down. So they never have to move the robot or anything like that. I think uh, Fulton3415 in the chat 
uh, says it perfectly. It's a mistake waiting to happen. It's very <laughs> kind of creative, but as we saw in those last couple stones, there as that stack started yeah. getting higher and higher, it got it gets getting really wobbly, um, and so they're running a risk of possibly knocking that whole thing over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. In the twenty second spot, we have team thirteen nine one seven. That's Hillside Robotics from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Even though their last competition was in December, this Michigan team definitely deserves to be in the top 25. Their rock-solid auto is complemented by their consistent 5-8 to eight stone teleop. And even though they did not advance to Worlds, they are one team that performed as they, as, uh, as they could be at Worlds. And honestly, the... People shouldn't forget, there is the uh, lottery tickets, the uh, World Championship lottery tickets that are still available. So if Hillside Robotics did apply for that, maybe they would get it. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, In the 21st spot, we have Team 6433. And that's the Neutrinos from Gibsonton, Florida. The the, the Neutrinos have a very elegant design this year. Um, Even though it's just a very simple claw mechanism, it works really quickly and really smoothly. Uh, starting right off in the autonomous, their horizontal claw allows them to be able to quickly grab the sky stones in auto, and they're able to quickly do, uh, continue doing so throughout teleop. And uh, one thing I want to add, Ashray, to this is at their recent uh, at their recent league championship, they actually double capped a nine stack with their partner, and they performed really well. So hopefully, we'll see some high scores from them at the state championship. Yeah. yeah. Another note, uh, real quick, about that type of design where they're stacking horizontally. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but another thing that I want to reemphasize is the fact that when you're stacking horizontally, um, it really causes a little bit of disruption because if your alliance partner has the more common method of stacking uh, vertically, of stacking the other mm-hmm. orientation, that mm-hmm. might not go so well if you're with an, uh, with uh, trying to stack alongside an alliance partner. So oh, that's a really good that. point. Yeah, that's a really good point. It also forces, in that strategy we're talking about, it forces you to only stack right on the outer edge. Uh, versus yeah. where some teams might be, some teams might want to stack more towards the middle for that added stability. Uh, I don't know. It seems like they're doing pretty well so far. Um, yeah. And in the twentieth spot, we have team twelve eight zero eight. That's Revamp Robotics from Portland, Oregon. Uh, Revamp was previously ranked fifth in our January voting, but they haven't had a competition since early January, so I'm not surprised they moved a little bit down. They've continued to have a great season. They were the winning alliance captain and the Inspire Award winner at the Portland Metro BB-8 qualifying tournament. Their state championship is coming up in March, so best of luck to them there. And I'm sure they're going to improve, and they're already an incredible robot. Do you guys have anything else to add about Revamped? No, I mean, I'm just interested to see how their uh, non-swerve drive uh, turns out this year for them. Yeah, same here. Yep. And uh, in the 19th spot, we have Team 9872. That's Informal Logic from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So Informal Logic is known for their big, fast, and intimidating robots, and this year is definitely no exception. They've got a solid drivetrain and a unique stone mechanism that holds the stones in front of them instead of passing through the center of the robot. Their auto claw is extremely unique, and they claim to be able to get four stones during auto. Yeah, one thing I like to add about the auto claw is um, I, I saw them recently at the Maryland uh, uh, scrimmage uh, that host, those hosted by Cubics. And by what I was hearing, it was a, it was using five servos, which seems oh a little bit excessive. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if, whatever gets the job done, if it right? Works, as it long works, as they're yeah. successful with it, they're good. Yeah, it, it's unique to say the least. Uh, <laughs> moving on, in the 18th spot, we have Team 12, 384. That's Checkmate from Park City, Utah. Checkmate has always had an amazing custom-made robot design, and this year they seem to be continuing that trend. Uh, they have a mechanism that appears to be a virtual four bar, but the different thing about it is that it comes out from the bottom rather than coming out from the top, which I think is really interesting. Uh, one downside I do see to this design is that it's going to be a little bit harder to stack because you have to have enough practice to be able to like take it out before you mm-hmm. go up to stack it. Sure, um, sure. But nevertheless, it's been a really good design, and because they're good driver practice they've been able to score really fast and really efficiently and it well deserves them to spot in this top 25. Yeah. And uh, one thing about overcharge or sorry, check me is that they have really uh, been public about the robot design and sharing all of their robot renders and photos. And I think it's a really great initiative by them to make themselves more well known in the first community and just like show new teams what a really well designed robot looks like. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely a smart strategy, especially when got kind of gearing towards awards, getting your name mm-hmm. out there, getting your ideas out there. Um, yeah. And then the 17th spot, we have 12599. And that's Overcharge from Portland, Oregon. 
So similar to Revamped, uh, they were previously ranked nine, so more down on our list, but they also haven't competed in quite a while. Uh, they took home the Think Award and the Winning Alliance Award at their league championship in January. Uh, they also have their state championship coming on uh, coming this month, so let's see what they do there. I know they since since their uh, last event, they have put out their reveal, which is pretty cool and intimidating to look at. Uh, but I'm sure that there's going to be some more improvements made to their robots since, as they've got a lot of time before they compete in March. Yeah. And uh, in the 16th spot, we have Team 16896. And that's Black Force Robotics from Aspen, Colorado. So this is the this is the only rookie team on our uh, top 25 list tonight, and they have been extremely impressive. They've been the winning alliance captain at all three of their qualifiers and won the Inspire Award at one of them. Recently, they set a world record at the Colorado State Championship with 6929 Data Force, and are just generally an extremely quick feeder bot that can also stack high. That can also stack pretty high. I have a quick question now that we're sitting here. Um, yeah. What do you guys think about the rule that you can only win one Inspire Award at every level? Because a team like that, where you're winning, where you win three tournaments, you win an Inspire Award, mm -hmm. um, they probably were contenders for Inspire at other tournaments, but couldn't win it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys uh, like the fact, or like, what? What do you think? So personally, I, yeah. So personally, I know from experience that winning the Inspire Award, once you've won it, it it could be a bad thing because if you're trying to go to another state and want to win the Inspire Award or want to hope to qualify to that state championship through the Inspire Award again, that's kind of limiting because you can't win the Inspire Award now. So you're praying for either Inspire Second or Winning Alliance, which is not that easy. So it's so it's, it's sort of a trade-off because if you win the Inspire, Inspire Award somewhere, then you can't win it in another place. So that could limit you from qualifying to another state championship or another tournament. I actually uh, didn't really know about this rule. Personally, I've competed three years just through the league system. So it's always just been the leagues for, uh, you know, just four meet or three to four meets and then just one Inspire Award at the championship, one Inspire at the state championship and one Inspire at the Worlds. Uh, personally, I don't see like too much of an issue with this because like if a team's going to win Inspire, that is the highest, uh, highest uh qualifying slot, like advancement slot. So it's not like they won't be going to the next level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's also a little fair because you know those rookie teams or teams that want an opportunity to get inspire can also so it sort of shares the wealth, which is sort of first team. So yeah, that's that is pretty the whole fair. point. Yeah. Uh, anyways, moving on, we have in the fifteenth spot, team ninety eight eighty ninety eight eighty nine. <laughs> um, that's, that's cruise control from Flanders, New Jersey. So cruise control looks like they have an awesome looking robot, and it's just as efficient as it looks. Uh, it has a really crazy fast intake system, and it can align itself really, really fast to be able to place those stones, which makes it a really, really strong contender for, the, contender for this year's season. And yeah. then one thing I want to mention about that is the fact that aligning um, with the foundation is something that's really important. And I know teams have gone into different strategies with this, where you know they've all, they've made their measurements so that they can just slam against the foundation and quickly place it, or even slam against the foundation of the wall, so get right into that corner and place it every time. So what do you guys think about aligning and how that sort of speeds up your robot stacking? I mean, I think you have to be careful with it because obviously if you line up too quickly and slam into the foundation too hard, it can knock over your whole stack. So yeah. that is something teams will definitely need to be careful about. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, my, my team uh, definitely did knock over a stack this past weekend in our, <laughs> in our league championship. That was so sad to watch. Um, but yeah, you really got to be careful when you're approaching the stack. Well, um, I was I was telling them this past weekend, drive fast, play slow. That's the whole. Yeah. You want to drive fast, but you want to play slow. And on um, that note, this. And sorry, I didn't interrupt. No, uh, and on that note, this one other thing that teams have been doing is activating like a slow mode type of thing where they make the robot oh, yeah. slower when it's near the foundation, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's another strategy that I've seen being used really well. Yeah, yeah. that's something that uh, my team implemented uh, last season for. Rover Ruckus. Uh, Rover Ruckus. I was trying to think what all the games are coming together in my head. Rover <laughs> Ruckus and Pharrell recovery. We had a slow mode yeah. as we approached um, the center of the field to score. We'd go really slow. When we approached one of the um, crypto boxes, we would go really slow. It definitely really helps. Yeah. Um, and rounding out the 14th spot is 14179. This is Sushi Squad from Redmond, Washington. The Sushi Squad has a very fast robot, and they're able to place four stones on the foundation during autonomous. Uh, they were the winning alliance captain and the control word winner at the Tesla Interleague uh, at the Washington State Championship. They were the captain of the number two alliance, but lost in the semifinals 
Uh, they also were nominated for the Control Award. Um, I don't I don't know what it is. I think it must be something in the water, but it seems like every team in Washington has a four stone auto at least. Crazy. And I mean, it's just it's really fun to see, but it's also incredibly scary because I mean, my team, if we make it to the world championship, would be competing against these with these really incredible teams. Yeah. Uh, also, their <laughs> name is pretty cool. Sushi yeah, squad. definitely. I know I remember watching it. I remember watching the Washington State Championship um, on Twitch. And it was just crazy because every single match seemed to be going well over 100 points. And that was kind of scary, not going to lie. <laughs> and uh, I know one thing they, they just uh, did and posted about was they actually donated or they sent hand sanitizer to China uh, to fight the coronavirus. And I thought that was a pretty cool uh, initiative taken by them. But yeah, all right. In the 13th spot, we have 88 or 8221. That's Cubics Cubed from Hampstead, Maryland. Cubics is back with a very quick robot. Whether they're speed running cycles or being fed, they're const- consistently building towers six stones or higher. At the at a PA qualifier, they actually hit eleven stones high. Only one of the few teams to do this this so far, and it'll be interesting to see how high they can go with two state championships approaching for them. Yeah, one quick note I want to add is that um, I saw them recently at at their own scrimmage um, this past weekend, and one thing that I saw that was really really interesting is that they were practicing trying to double cap their towers. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, because they have a very interesting capstone mechanism. No leaks here, but that's something to look out for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, teams should be aware that only one team can place a capstone. So mm-hmm. it's not like yep. one team can place both. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, next up in the 12th spot, we have Team 5064. They are Aperture Science from Elon, North Carolina. Aperture Science did really, really well last season. Um, I believe they were part of the finalist alliance. Winning alliance at the Houston Winning, Winning, Winning alliance. alliance. Winning alliance, right. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did equally as well this season, too. Uh, they have a really nice stone grabber and a really fast sizzle lift. And I think that they, with their stacking ability, they'd be a good stacking robot. Uh, their strong autonomous also helps them make a, a really nice uh, alliance partner. And that makes them well-deserved uh, for this list. I think it should be interesting to see if uh, a team with such like building expertise decides to switch uh, designs and strategies going from the state championship to I hope I, I hope they w- make it to the world championship. And it should be interesting to see if uh, claw bots like uh, Team Titanium Tech, Aperture Science, all of these guys will decide to switch or whether they'll keep their design. Because Ashray, as one thing you said, is almost all of these guys stack horizontally. And so that does make it a lot more difficult for other teams that are looking to compete with them. Yep. Uh, I feel like they're going to have to switch their intake mechanisms because mm-hmm. it's so much slower to try to line up like they are. I mean, they're doing so well now, clearly, uh, but a lot of the qualif- qualifiers is just how well you can drive your robot yeah. um, versus how amazing your robot actually is. Um, I think a lot of those teams are going to need to switch it. I think uh, something that should be really interesting to see at World Championships will be if the uh, opposing alliance decides to steal stones while the other alliance is stacking. Because yeah. as you can see, there's a little bit of uh, lag time, or not lag time, but a little bit of wasted time between when one team is just stacking and the other team is feeding. So you have this stone sitting right here. And like, yes, while you might not get that one delivery point, you are taking away four points, up to four points for that stone being on the foundation and cap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think it's gonna be a long time before we get to that. Um, what will probably end up happening is when a team has two um, collector bots, where uh, not, not, sorry, let me rephrase. Uh, where we're gonna see that start happening is when we don't have the one bot stacking, one bot feeding. When we start having two robots that are both stacking and collecting, then you're gonna probably have to see some stealing because there's gonna be a lot of. Uh, uh, speed there in terms of grabbing, going back, grabbing again. So they're going to need teams are going to need to get creative in terms of where they can start grabbing stones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in the eleventh spot, we have team seventy one seventy two. Uh, guys, are we having some issues right now? Because this is team technical difficulties from Plano, Texas. Uh, technical difficulties has a very smooth robot with a mechanum drive and a large compliant wheel intake. Uh, they have been on the winning alliance for three tournaments so far in Texas. They also have won an Inspire Award and a Think Award, uh, as well as they've gotten nominations for pretty much every other award there is. Uh, <laughs> 71 72 has had a great season so far, and I expect them to do even better as the year progresses. 
All right. In in the tenth spot sits eighty seven nineteen. That's quantum leap from Mason, Ohio. And that uh, quantum leap this year has had three qualifiers so far, and they've been the winning alliance captain two out of three times. Recently, at the Mountain Maryland Skystone qualifier, they had an astounding OPR of 82.2 points, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see some high-scoring autos from them and their really efficient odometry methods. Yeah, I remember competing with them. I was uh, Our team was competing uh, alongside them in that alliance uh, when they at Mountain Maryland, mm-hmm. and I remember just seeing their auto run, and it was just beautiful. It was going so oh, yeah. fast back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing is their stacking ability is just, they have a very, very unique um, stacking um, method. And I think that that's going to be something interesting to see how that evolves. Um, yeah. Can I just point out the pro strat here of this event that their volunteers are in yellow shirts and then they decided to give all their referees yellow soccer shirts as well? It's <laughs> yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. You, gotta, you really got to blend in there. You don't, you don't want teams to know who's who. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, in our ninth spot, we have Team 11260. That's Upper Creek Robotics from Longmont, Colorado. Upper Creek has yet has made yet again a very competitive robot. Uh, they have a very simple but well constructed horizontal and vertical side system, which is which seems to be very meta this year. Uh, they're also using a measuring tape uh, to park, and they have a very fast moving teleop, which makes them an incredibly high scoring and consistent team. What do you guys think of the uh, measuring tapes this year? Do you like that? or? I think if a team can figure out a way to use a servo for it, it's a lot better than using one of your uh, like crucial eight motors. Um, but other than that, I mean, if teams really want to use it and it's successful, then, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. I've, especially I don't since know. this year, since this year, it'd be better to just go with two motors for the vertical lift yeah. than, to, than to use like one motor there and one motor for parking. Uh, so yeah, I definitely use the servo for extending, and I've seen some other unique things uh, to park, such as slides or you know poppers, and there there've been some unique designs out there. So it'd be interesting to see the variety in addition to measuring tapes. I have Sorry, a Nate. more more general question, just about like the spirit of that rule. Um, what do you guys think of the fact that like this year, and we've of course seen it in past games, you're allowed to have like parking points count when you can just like extend a mechanism or extend a measuring tape over it. Um, because at first I loved it, but now that I'm thinking about it, we see this year after year. It kind of makes no sense to have a parking bonus if you can just like mm-hmm. stick a measuring tape out or stick a slide out. You should actually have to physically go there. I think. I mean, I think that's something first has to address themselves. But yeah. I mean, if teams are going to keep finding innovative and creative solutions to these problems, uh, I think it's. I mean, more power to them. No, totally. I applaud teams for doing what they can within the rules. I'm more just asking about the rules as a. Uh, general thing right so this is something that i've mentioned before happened in frc so this goes back to 2002 where uh mind the uh 140p feed that's going to come on here where teams had <laughs> you know mini bots tape measures uh spring loaded oh my god things to to go to the other side of the field and this is one of those things that you know in future years first got rid of uh because it was something like hey you know we you know for parking bonus or something like that uh, we don't we don't want this anymore. Uh, also, as a side note, this year uh, there there was a team, uh, the best team this year. Uh, that a lot of teams adopted had metal foul cards that went into the carpet, and that was also removed too. So uh, you know, rules change. You know, I, I think sometimes you know you don't always think about everything, and then it happens. You're like, well, enough teams are doing it. We're not going to ban it this year, but it might happen in future years. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah and i think the measuring tape although it may be like a little iffy because you're not really parking or whatever um i think that it's it's a good like um what's it called uh curiosity driver so it helps people like really think about how to really solve that problem because instead of going to park you can just stick something in there so it 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 causes for another another problem to solve which i think is nice yeah definitely uh and rounding out the eighth spot we have 7357 and that's none other than Team Titanium Tech from Lee Summit, Missouri. Uh, t- Team Titanium Tech was pre- previously ranked third in our January voting, and they hold the second highest OPR in the world right now and have been kicking butt. Uh, they have a beautiful, beautifully built robot and are very quick, effective, and precise. Uh, their state championship is coming up in three weeks, and it should be a very successful tournament for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else uh, to add about their robot? It's beautiful. I mean- I think we've talked a lot about them in previous shows, and we've talked about a lot of robots similar to them. So I think it's time to move on to the seventh spot, which is 8393. And that is the giant diencephalic brainstem robotics team from Baden, Pennsylvania. 
83-93 has just been a really top team in the past couple years, and they've been keeping it up this season, being the winning alliance captain at the Mahoning Valley Qualifier with a high score of 128. Like previous years, they feature an extremely well-built bot that is just a pleasure to watch when competing. And uh, after the show, I recommend all of you guys go to our First Updates Now YouTube channel and watch their Behind the Bot uh, from MTI. It's just really, really uh, exciting, and it really teaches you guys, uh, it will really teach you guys a lot about how to build a top quality robot. And they'll be competing at the Ohio State Championship on March 13th and 14th, so I'm sure we'll see some high scores there. Yeah. One thing I want to note is that they were at the Mahoming Valley Qualifier where they got like a really, really high score. I think it was 128, yeah, you said earlier? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so where they got that high score is they were with their alliance partner, um, who was their um, baby team, the substantial monocephalic brainstorm robotics team. Yeah. And that sister team duo was just crazy. And you can see it in this, you can see it in this video, but they're actually working on two different towers, mm-hmm. um, which I think is really interesting because the reasoning for that is that if they could both independently get eight or nine stacks, there's not really a reason for them to one to deliver one to stack. I so, think uh, actually, Asher, I'm gonna go against you a little bit on that. I think it is ac- quite like uh, illogical for teams to do two stacks this year because you get two points per level for the highest skyscraper, and if you're having two towers, you lose pretty much half of the points for one of the skyscrapers automatically. Yeah. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that plays mm-hmm. out at Worlds when teams mm-hmm. are getting even better at stacking. I'm sure yeah. we're going to see a lot of instances where we've got two giant 12, 13, maybe even 14 <laughs> stacks going. Yeah. I'm yeah. curious, what do you guys think the uh, limit for stacks will be? How high do you think we'll go? I think we'll see 16 to 17 at, you think, at a chance. You think we'll see a 20? I, no. I, I maybe, think... I think with two teams like gluten free and like another really really high scoring team um, that might come out later this season, especially since we see so many high scoring teams like in Iowa and Pennsylvania and um, New Hampshire, of course gluten free. But mm-hmm. I think that with that combination of all those teams together, I'm pretty sure we could see a twenty stack. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it at least. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, it's gonna be fun when we get to Worlds. <laughs> in the sixth spot, we have team seventy two thirty six. That's Recharged Green from Pell, Iowa. Recharged Green is another team that's just been scoring so high right off the start from the season. Um, and just been, they've just been killing it in Iowa. Uh, they currently hold an OPR of 80.6, which for this game is just amazing. Uh, they have a crazy fast intake and lift, which also helps them make a really reliable alliance partner, whether that be to deliver or to stack. Yeah. Uh, and in the fifth spot, we have a boss's team, 3101. Yay. And uh, we're the Boombots from Palm Harbor, Florida. Uh, previously, the second-ranked team, the Boombots, have been having a great season this year. Uh, they just won the Gulf Coast Robotics League Championship and won the Design Award and the Promote Award. They have the sixth-best OPR in the world and are on track to defend their world championship title. The Florida Championship is in two weeks. Let's wait and see how they do there. Yeah. Uh, on to a team I'm really excited to talk about, and that is the fourth spot with four, with 8802. That's negative resistance from Bellevue, Washington. 8802 has just been doing extremely well so far this season, being the winning alliance first pick at the Washington State Championship a couple weeks ago, and they just have a blazingly fast intake combined with precise autonomous methods to have a four to five stone auto. Uh, negative resistance has qualified for the Houston World Championship, so it should be it should be interesting to see if they can get even more stones in auto and higher stacks during teleop. I know they'll be competing soon at the NorCal Championships, so hopefully we'll see some great things there. And uh, current rumor is that they have a five stone three stack auto so i'm excited to see that Ooh. yeah yeah and that's another thing that you know stack starting to stack the stones in auto mm-hmm. does although it might take a little bit more time so instead of five stone auto you might have a four stone auto but at the same time that does give you the benefit of saving you time during teleop where you already have a stack starting to be built what do you guys think about that uh, I think there's like both pros and cons to it. With auto this year, there's just so many points for delivering and placing the stone. I mean, for a sky stone, you're talking about 14 points for placing it on the foundation, and then for a regular stone, you're talking about six points. Whereas with a with an extra level, you're not actually gaining any points in the overall match score as you would if you just placed it in teleop. And so like, if you think about it, placing a stone on the foundation in auto is six points and then stacking it would like if you just had done that in teleop, that would be five points. So it's like if you're going to like, I don't think it's worth losing a stone for. 
that that's that's a good perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on to the third spot, we have team ten four thirty five. They are the Circuit Breakers from Waukee, Iowa. The Circuit Breakers are yet another team that have been really, really strong throughout the season. Just from the start, they've had one of the top OPRs in the world. Um, and I just can't wait to see how much better the robot can get. Um, although they have a very simple and pretty meta design, they've implemented it in a way that is so unique and so well made that it makes them really stand out from all the other meta teams. Uh, they also currently hold eight of the top 10 records in Iowa. So that's wow. crazy. That's yeah. pretty crazy. And then rounding out our second spot, we have 69-29. That is Data Force from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Uh, Data Force jumped from the number seven spot to the number two spot in this month's rankings. Uh, I am just still in love with their turret robot. Uh, they can deliver five stones during autonomous and are super fast and efficient. Uh, they just have a great robot all around. Uh, at the most recent North Denver qualifier, they were the winning alliance captain and won the Think Award. Uh, Data Force has won two qualifiers so far this year, and they have the eighth highest score in the world. Wow. And uh, actually, recently, they did just set a world record with a score of 149. That included a five-stone auto, but they didn't park, and an 11 stack. So that's just incredible. There's nothing Holy else to cow. say about it. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, drum roll, please, for our number one spot. And that is Team 11115. I wonder who that is. I've never heard of them before. <laughs> That's Team Gluten Free from Hollis, New Hampshire. Gluten Free has just been a powerhouse for the last three years in FTC, and it doesn't look like Steven's planning on stopping now. They hold the top six scores in the world with five matches that have five stone autos, and I mean, just wow is the only way to describe it. They have an OPR of 104.9, and it's just really amazing uh, watching how well their intake works and how seamlessly integrated all components of their robot and program are. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's much more to be said about them other than they're <laughs> just way too dominant. Yeah. One thing I do want to mention, though, is the fact that they have a very unique lift system. I, I mean, I see countless teams doing uh, vertical lifts or even scissor lifts, but double reverse four bar is, I mean, it's an interesting tactic. Yeah. And uh, one thing I was just thinking about the other day is that Steven, whenever he plays, uh, it, for those who don't know, Gluten Free is a one-man team this year, and whenever he plays, he has to run the other team's human player. So I just thought that was just something kind of interesting and uh, funny, because I know a lot of top teams spend time, like, working with their human players to figure out which stones are the best and, like, which stones have, like, kinks or dents in them, and, like... Uh, it should just be interesting to see how that works out in qualifiers. But I know for the state championship, he said his sister is going to be their human player. So, yep. Where's Peter at? Is he in college now? Yeah, Peter's yeah. in college. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Stevens Institute of Technology, I believe. So. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yep. And uh, there's our top twenty-five guys. Any uh, any final thoughts or comments? I'm just excited to see how high robots go for the world and state championships coming up. I think I, it's pretty crazy. I think there's another thing. So I I noticed that in this uh, top 25, there's a really good balance between uh, Detroit teams and Houston teams. That's true. That's, That's true. That I think is really interesting because I remember last year, it was a very strong powerhouse of Detroit teams and just a mm -hmm. few Houston teams that are popping up. So I I find it interesting that there's a really good balance of teams across the world, across the nation this year. And one other thing is that I didn't see any international teams yet on this list. So. I'm, I'm sure we'll see the likes of uh, yeah. Quantum Robotics and a lot of teams from Russia and Romania doing really yeah. well. I think there was one or two uh, international teams last week, or last week, last uh, Top 25. Yeah. Yep. So we'll just share right now. In two weeks, we have our next episode of FTC Live, so make sure you turn it, tune in. And then on March, 20, on March 18th, we will be having another uh, FTC recap and FTC Top 25, so stay tuned for the next Top 25 poll that we'll be sending out closer to that show. Uh, so thank you for all the follows and subscriptions we received today. Uh, don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Top 25. If you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at FunFTC, and make sure to join our Discord through the link in the chat. Uh, Tyler, can you read off who has pledged their support on stream? Yeah, let's give a big uh, shout out there to those who have supported the, uh, throughout this entire day here. So big thanks to uh, Adam14875 uh, for 16 months 
Uh, total Mecha Muffin, five months of support. Seth Peace with a Prime Sub. Uh, 30K Jam with 100 bits and a Prime Sub today. Cookie Hero 289, 13 months of support. Dev Boy with two months of support. JBC Boss with a Prime Sub. And Luke Warm, three months of support. Thank you, everybody, for helping fun stay loud, live, and independent. And uh, on behalf of myself, Nathan, Ashray, and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. We will be opening the March 25 top, or the March top 25 voting poll in a couple of weeks. And in two weeks, as uh, Nathan said, we will have another episode of FTC Live. See you then, and good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.